one that sort of thing but it's not it's very serious and it's it is an important topic yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the Out and, and Social, social <laughs> So this is our new podcast um, <laughs> This is our new podcast New podcast, new me <laughs> oh, I don't know why I'm doing that <laughs> But of course I'm still me So guys, uh, sorry it took so long to make our second one uh, Life kind of got in the way Yeah so yeah, things have opened up again, so our life has now resumed back to normal-ish. Kind of normal-ish. Yeah. But I think people are like struggling to adjust, adjust now. Adjust to it now. But I don't know if it's just me, but I can't, like I have a limit of being out. Like too many people. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm alright, I think. I still like crowded places. But that was, prior that, to, that was before. Yeah, you've never liked um, that. I said before podcast, before COVID. <laughs> I didn't know that been in crowded places. But anyways, we're back with a new topic. Mm-hmm. And that topic is drum roll, mental health yes. within our Asian community, yeah. South Asian community. So, yeah. in other words, like uh, we want to talk about taboo subjects. Um, however, we're touching up upon mental health this week, um, just because we know that it's not talked about at all, and how it's seen as a taboo. Really, yeah. no one really talks about it. Yeah. So it's never it's not really spoken about within our community, or it's kind of like brushed away under basically, like, yeah, it's not to be minor sort of thing, but it's not. It's very serious and it's it is important topic so um okay let's get straight into it then yeah what is mental health to you like what, what does it mean to you what okay uh, let's, let's start again if i said mental health what comes to your mind um straight away like if instantly i'm like i'm thinking you know uh people who just basically suffer from depression so that's a form of mental health um, or even like if you don't have a specific label, if it's something like you, you don't feel like um, coming out of your house and you just feel like always down and you don't feel like eating, like there's there's loads of li little symptoms. Um, but I would say that it's when it's consistent, that's when, you know, um, your mental health is at risk. I think if you're constantly feeling like that, because people do have days where you feel a bit low and, you know, you do sometimes want to stay in. Yeah. But if you're always like that, then I think that is probably aiming towards okay there's something got to help basically yeah yeah i think that's basically it but there's loads i mean there's there's so many different forms of mental health but straight away that's what comes, comes into my head mind. because you know how common that is in mm. south asia for community. me if, I, if you said mental health to me what comes to mind is obviously depression mm. feeling low all the time and uh, no energy to do anything always feeling negative towards anything for example going out on uh if i go out this is gonna happen like always having a negative yeah, energy towards true. things i thought that is a massive like for me anyway it's a massive um indicator of mental health or mm -hmm. depression sort of thing or not having the drive to do anything yeah and um yeah that's when that there's and like anxiety panic attack the fact that's all part of mental health but that's what comes to my mind thing about mental health yeah yeah guys so after doing some research, mental health is three main factors. Our social well-being, our psychological emotion, and our <laughs> emotional feelings. Uh, so, right. so the actual definition of mental health is um, your social, emotional, mental well-being, uh, which actually determines... Um, your behavior, your behavior, and how you how, handle stress. Yeah, and it also like, it can affect your behavior. It, it can affect your behavior, mm -hmm. the way you, your thinking process. Mm -hmm. It can literally affect your whole life. Like it yeah, can, it can change as a whole person. Absolutely. And um, it's also how like you cope with stress as well. Like I feel like not many people can cope with stress. Mm. I mean, people have different ways of coping with it. Like mm. um, I don't know. It, it, for me, for example, like I think it's kind of the mindset that you have towards it. Like, for example, with, I mean, everyone stresses out everything. So I'm like, I'm thinking you are gonna just get over it one day. Yeah. You're gonna be able to go through, uh, and actually go uh, get through the hurdle that you've got going on at the moment. So that's basically the way I think of it. Uh, but other people might like need to, for example, go professional on professional health, professional or, uh, spiritual yeah. health, uh, different levels of stress and different levels of. Um, 
depression and that people mm. go through i don't think like, i don't think we have it that bad i i, I don't think so no like everyone obviously has everyone different has forms different of lives, mental health exactly. but like life is different as i guess i guess like do you think you have mental like any signs or forms of mental health or have you had anything like that what so 2020 in november so when we got out of lockdown we had a bit of freedom and then well john decided to go back into lockdown that is when i think i felt at the lowest of the lowest mm-hmm. like just when you thought it's getting back to normal and you get dragged straight back down to it that is when i felt like why sort of thing and i feel like we're never getting back to normal and i couldn't i had, I had difficulty accepting life basically and i feel like at that point i just feel like even though it's room full of people or i was with you guys and everything mm-hmm. i still felt like alone and trapped just because i feel like we're never gonna get out of lockdown or we couldn't do the little things as like even like going to, doing that the littlest minor little missions was the biggest mission like going shopping do you know yeah, so, your mission something, that something as simple as that like we used to enjoy just going on errands but like something as simple as that you probably think was the now. biggest problem ever so it's go. like everything became an inconvenience mm. basically and just like I don't know, like, I can't explain it, but at the time I couldn't speak about it. Like, yeah. At the time, if you see me, you would never think I was down. You know what? I No one would realise. Yeah, and I think, how many people do we walk past on a daily basis? Like, how do we know what they're going what they're through? Going and, through and you don't know what people are going through. That, and, like, that's what I mean. Like, during that time, nobody knew what I was going through. And, mm-hmm. I would, again, everyone's different. I wouldn't want to show how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. But I cope with it by talking about it after. So, for example, so I went to the end of November. And I think I told you guys in like January. Yeah. Like months, months, months later. later. But that's just your coping mechanism. That's what I, I that's what I do. I can't talk about mm. at that point. At that point, um, it doesn't come out my mouth. Basically, I can't physically say. It. I feel like ugh, saying it out loud. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But later on, I can talk about it. Like this is how I felt. But and then that relates back to how it's taboo. Maybe to, because it's been made. It's been made taboo. Yeah. Like you're like because it's not, not comfortable. Because maybe because it's not like a massive deal that I'm going through, but still it's affecting me. But, but that's what we've been deal. told, yeah. like in our society, like it's minor, and that's I think what's kind of drilled into your head. And I think Therefore, you deal with it in that way yeah. for that reason and i see it as like although i shouldn't buy stuff us oh, so someone probably going out there, somebody out there going through a worse problem than, worse worse in the world oh <laughs> sorry guys a worse problem than me and um, they're crying about lockdown where somebody else could be like did you fight for their life or you know what i mean mm. something like that but again you shouldn't compare your problems with anybody's problems everyone has it doesn't a... mean you're not suffering just no. because your problem might seem uh like less no. uh, than, than someone else yeah. it doesn't mean like you're still home. suffering exactly and like the way I coped at the time was I literally like for me personally is I prayed I literally went to prayer mat and I let it all out and I felt so mm. relieved and so like that's more like I, was, I just felt like that was my way of letting it all out yeah but not to people if that makes sense yeah oh I, my think, God. I think you need to kind of like think of a way uh, for those who have recognised, okay, I think there's something wrong with me. I think that's the very first step mm. to actually realise, okay, like, recognise your problem. Recognise your yeah, point, I'm, what you're I'm going feeling through. like this consistently. Something's not right. Um, because I, like workplaces now, for example, they teach you. They have like a whole module on mental yeah. health. When they have a whole team now, like uh, yeah. the support and stuff, which is exactly amazing. like they they basically say these are the signs. So if your colleagues, for example, are showing these signs, then please report raise it, it and or raise report it, yeah. it. And it should be like that on a day to day basis. Like if yeah. you. If you think that someone's acting a bit funny and it's been quite consistent, it's something you should definitely like. Be like, okay, they've been alright. Like, just yeah. check up on them, basically. Definitely. So that's what I. I think that's some of the like. Down is your, your the most recent so one. Anyway, I'm going too deep in my past. Be it all day. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm not a deep person, guys. <laughs> um, that's the most recent one I think for me, and that was last year in November. Um, how about you? Have you ever had like? What's the most recent down time well, you felt or um, bearing in mind mental can be like anxiety, panic. Yeah, it can be answer. anything. And yeah. anything that you think it could be, like there's no right or wrong answer no, really. No. It's it's something that's affecting your day to day life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think I think for me, um, I had like a time where I was working in a different country. So that was like when I graduated from uni and I was twenty one and straight away I got a job abroad and I just basically packed my bags and left. But um, right, we're doing that. Yeah, I'm, d- I'm 24 <laughs> today, right now, not today, but you know, 24. <laughs> like, until and still, I would not be able to move to another country. I don't know. You know what it is? It was just because you're young and you just make a spontaneous decision. You don't think twice. You don't yeah. have responsibilities. You're like, yeah, let's just try it out. Yeah. So I, I basically approached that with that mindset, and um, I 
I think my mental health started all my like I I started um getting anxiety and I've never experienced what that was like before. It's horrible. Feeling. It's so horrible. It's so horrible. Like um I used to travel back home every week, so I used to basically catch four flights a week. She didn't catch food, she catch flights. Yes. Four <laughs> flights a week. <laughs> Basically. Like, there were her buses to her, you know. Literally, they were that. You know what it is? Like, I would wake up on a Sunday. I'm, st- I'm at home in Birmingham. Uh, and I would think, as as everyone probably does, oh, I've got work on Monday, next day. But it's in a different country. Different country. I have to. And I'm casually drinking my tea, eating breakfast. And I'm like, I need to catch two flights. <laughs> and then I need to get two. I don't know how you do it. it. Yeah, it's just, it's just a bit weird. But like... When I used to approach the airport, that's when like that feeling developed. Like in your chest, and I was like, it? "What's going on?" And I was like, Whoa. "And I'm like, yeah, like I'm kind of like um, my, my breathing has changed, and I'm like, what is in that? Order, What's in going in, on?" We say with a huffki, and uh, oh, wait, I know the Bengali word for this, Oshanti. Uh, <laughs> so like, I basically developed that, and then at first I don't know what it was, um, and actually throughout the whole like I was there half a year, I had it probably throughout the whole time. It never really got better, but I didn't know what it was. I was yeah. just like, "What is this feeling?" But then I didn't read much into it. But but and I started losing weight and everything. Like it really affected my physical health as well. I think if I actually recognized it sooner, it would have got to that. Yeah. So basically, that's probably the one experience that I've had where I'm like, I can say, yeah, at that point, my mental health was affected. So like, obviously for you it was work. So work affected work. you, and then yeah. you did leave it. Because I did, yeah. It was, it was help of a birth, basically. Yeah. And um, and after you, you felt much better. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Like mm. I literally, uh, that feeling went straight away. So then I knew that that's what was holding me back. And I think that's another important thing to actually recognize what it is. Yeah, definitely like, recognize yeah. what it is, and then try to take yourself out of it. And a lot of people's mental health uh, gets affected by work. M- 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 work is one of them. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um. And if you can, I said ever leave your job if you're depressed. <laughs> but if you can, and like I'll address it, address it, yeah, whatever address way, address where you can, it. and see if your work can help you and self support you. Because work, like I said, work for nowadays will support you because the mental health is massive now, um, and like it's massive because the people are taking their own lives because they can't mm. deal with the stress, they can't handle it anymore. So it is a massive journey. It is very important, and I feel like within our Asian community. They don't see how important it is until something drastic happens. Even then, I feel like and it's even like... then they're like, "Oh, why? Why didn't they speak to us?" But then maybe they tried to reach out to you, yeah. but then you didn't listen to listen to them. Or... So like how how we were saying that work is one of the reasons. The other one is uh, I Could think the whole... big one is uh, family pressure. Family, yeah, family and pressure. And I think it's mainly kind of faced by um, males in the South Asian community. Yeah. Like there's this um, expectation of getting an amazing job and like. Uh, providing for family of five like times have changed like yeah it's very difficult now to be pe- to be the perfect person no one's perfect like our generations have changed back in the day mm. when our parents were like when it's our parents times it was only the dad working or mm. one person in the family working and feeding the whole family in this day like you can't you, it's, it's not affordable either the whole family needs to work or the, both parents everyone needs to work basically to feed a, a household now it's not what it's you can't, you can't rely on one person anymore so it still ties in with each other like yeah. you have to like you get family pressures at home and then you go to work and then you could get pressured from work, from as, work well. as well so yeah. there's no escape for it really um and i think really uh and how you're talking about the previous gen like our parents generations um obviously the majority of our parents are immigrants so they yeah. they've gone through a lot of struggle to kind of like raise raise us and things like that like, uh, they come from a different country mm. learn a new language but then here. they they compare their struggles like what struggle, you're struggling with our struggle if you compare it it's nothing but it's still it's still something do you get it like it's com- it's on a completely different radar because we're in different generations yeah. but the struggles are different doesn't mean that their struggles were like uh, meant more or like yeah. you should of just get over it. Of course it was hard, but they can't say, oh, look, because we've been through that, you can get through this. That's the way they see it. Yeah, because they didn't have the struggle of like uh, the, the, finance, <laughs> the finance side of things. They didn't have that struggle that, oh, the whole family needs to work. How are we yeah. going to get jobs? How are we going to pay for things? You know, there's different struggles in different generations. And I think that needs to be understood. Yeah, 100%. And I know that, that's why I feel like a lot of the Asian, like our parents and stuff, or the Asian community, mm-hmm. they don't... They could because they're comparing and they're saying our problem is less or like get over yourself like it's not that deep sort of thing. But they and you know what's quite sad as well uh, when 
let's say when a, a man does try to communicate their problems i mean that's a big step for them anyway because again yeah. there's an expectation like you know you're meant to be like this macho, macho man. man and yeah. like uh and apparently that that is derived from you don't speak about your feelings like i don't know where that's come from but i yeah. think that's what we've said that's what's been said. That's what's been said, and it's mm. it is on it is unfair on men as well. Like, whether for a man for him to come out and speak about his mental health, mm. he's in his mind or to people, he might be thinking he's masking to his question. Mm. It's not man to talk about your feelings, or it's not man to be like, oh, I'm depressed. It's like get on and get over it. But that's why men's suicide rate is a lot higher because mm. they don't talk about it. They just do the job, and that's it. And but we've even spoken to like our male friends and stuff like, and and we have asked them like how do, do you think you suffer from it and how do you deal with it and unless until we actually asked that question yeah. we had no idea yeah. like we had to actually go out away and ask them and it was some quite random yeah, as well. some said uh, no i don't i don't have yeah. any uh, mental health like are you mad sort of thing but there was one or two who said like so yeah so one of our friends said basically when he's feeling down and depressed what he does is he goes for a long walk mm -hmm. he refreshes his mind and then he comes home that way he's refreshed and he can think again because sometimes like i said with men they have all that pressure on them everything is clogged up and they don't know how to react that's and the problem and, and it kind of like uh they have an outburst it could be you know the outburst um, can go the wrong way exactly exactly like they could resort to things like drugs and alcohol and um kind of um, Even letting like out on their family, family or the anger you know what i mean yeah like it can lead for a man it can lead many other ways mm. obviously mental health is just just like important for women as well but mm. i'm just saying that men don't talk about it and working within the nhs honestly god like s seeing how many men come in for suicidal thoughts or od or like mm. s because of mental health it's crazy I, I didn't realize how how big it was up until i worked with the nhs and like if you hadn't told me i, ha I would ha have not honestly and then a lot of south asia like a lot of men from the south asia community come into nhs uh, come into like hospital and stuff because of mental health and they're feeling depressed or they want to like um kill themselves about that um it's it's big that's all i'm gonna but say you know it the, the fact is that they've still caught, uh, gone to the hospital and they've asked for help like that is that a big is step in itself. exactly and i honestly got like i read the favor coming out because like mm. i said for men it's the whole like ego and masculinity that they want to brush it up like yeah no, i don't there's nothing wrong with me but the fact that me. they came out and they got the help of the media and they got mm. referred to the right people and you know and i'm glad they did come and i just feel like a lot of men nowadays don't just trap it in for themselves basically and they keep it to themselves and they shouldn't they don't need to like do they make you any less of a man i just think uh, like um our society really needs to be um educated a bit more um and really it should kind of come from someone who's on their level like for example yeah. to educate our parents it should ideally be someone like on their level because they're level. more likely to listen like you know the asian dramas and tvs they watch rather than having some like in law problems and stuff <laughs> have like a, a show about like mental health and yeah stuff. that's actually a good idea and literally they have a show or that promotes color tv yeah. like come on man now where you got to play that that's that's a sick idea can, you can know? imagine like every Stop drama us. on those channels is about an evil sister who wants the brother-in-law or mother in law yeah. to kill the daughter in law some crap like that like bullshit and i'm just saying if that shit happened in real life then all that they're meant to have would have been gone gone finished been finished you know what i mean so I think for our parents, I think something like that needs to be like would be ideal. And then for us, there's so much on social media. I think social media yeah. has helped a lot. There's so much now. Like I think you've got mental health awareness week. You've mm. got um, you've got celebrities talking about mental health and so, which is obviously wicked as well, like spreading awareness and stuff. So luckily for us, we've got social media. We've got our friends and. Mm you know stuff like that but well, it's I've, just a step taking that step to actually be like oh i think there's something wrong like yeah. you know acknowledging um, the fact that you've got something wrong with you yeah that's the first step taking the step that you take there's loads of professional help maybe you might need professional help but you might want to just lead to your spiritual spiritual way or even like just someone just like again your friends and friends or... sometimes i think people don't even want advice they just want someone to listen listen and talk to them yeah it yeah or like if you can't like so for myself i couldn't express myself at the time for me i prayed or other people could be writing in a diary or uh making video diaries video diaries a vlog vlog um, vlog a vlog a vlog hey guys this is my vlog of my mental health today <laughs> this helps whatever me. helps yeah whatever helps even even talking in front of a mirror writing it down do some coloring, <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't coloring books. <laughs> 
I love that actually. I love the kids ones. Um, <laughs> it's more like easy and they're like, <laughs> God, focus. Uh, so yeah, there's loads out there now and like there's loads of like um, free services on the NHS website. You can always go look at that. Um, you're not alone in this. We are with you. We are with you. <laughs> the Alice, Alice you know what? We can you. be acne aunts. I would love to do that. Oh, I would love to do <gasps> Guys, you know where we are. <laughs> you got any problems? I don't know if this exists already. I've literally just thought of this now. So there should be like a forum where people can uh, anonymously post there, there the old forums. Yeah. There, there are there. Yeah, there must be loads. There's gossip forums. There's like. No, I mean for mental health. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I wonder, guys. You just want to gossip down. You just want the juice. Like I said, try speaking to your family, your parents, and like try making them understand. Put yourself first. Put yourself first. Put yourself first. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Happiness lies within yourself and not with somebody else. Oh. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> no, I 100% believe that, right? Mm. If you're not happy within yourself, you're never gonna be happy in life, and never ever look for happiness in somebody else as well. You, if you don't have happiness within yourself, then you can't make other people happy. I, that's no. the way I see it. Like, yeah. how are you going to, in, in every aspect of your life, whether you go to work, at home, every, everything's just gonna be affected. Okay, yeah, so find 100%. that within yourself. Self. And always, you know, be kind to yourself, love yourself, and don't put pressure on yourself. Like life will carry, life will go at its own pace, and just. Take it easy, just don't pressure yourself. That's what I realised. Like whenever I go through anything like stress in my life, for example, today I'm like, oh okay, let me go back into uni time for example. I had, I had an essay to do. It's essay and assignments essay. It's been that long. And I had some work to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had some work to do and um I just didn't know what I was doing and I kept I just, I couldn't get the help and no one's helping me basically right and I felt like I felt like suffocated because no one's helping me and the deadline's creeping up and then i think i don't think i cried but i felt sad <laughs> and I, I said to myself why am i beating myself up about mm. this in a month's time i'm gonna figure up forget about this day mm. and i did and guess what i passed that essay as well i didn't yeah. get the best grade but i passed <laughs> okay so <clears throat> you know how we were promoting or oh, love yourself and everything what do you do to love, love yourself self-care okay. for me it's self-care so whenever i'm feeling like crap or i feel like i've worked too much i do work guys what do you do like to make for me what i do is literally i'll okay have a date in yeah like stay at home mm -hmm. have a hot bath with my lush bath bomb and just literally just be by myself yeah Spend time with yourself. Spend time with myself. Mm. Um, I'll order some food on Uber Eats, some Slams Big Burger. Uh, <laughs> greasy beef uh, burps. Oh, they taste nice though. <laughs> Not your burps. <laughs> and my cheese bites. And I literally like to take care of myself like in that way. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy myself, yeah. Mm. And I, whenever I do feel stressed out, I just think about like, you know what, inshallah, in the one time I'm not going to feel like this. This day will be over. This time will be over. And that's the way I get on with it, basically. I don't dwell on it. If you dwell on it, the more you're literally going down. I mean, going if you down, dwell on it, is the situation going to change? No. That's literally... Ask yourself that. The more you think about it, the more you think about it, you're literally digging yourself a hole and you're feeling more like... like something Nothing I think yeah. is going to change besides you overthinking and uh, making your mental health worse. Yeah. And obviously, it's easier said than done, but just try it. Like, just try not to overthink. Try little, little steps and see how it changes within your life, basically. And again, there's loads of professional help out there. I like, don't think you're alone in this. You're not alone in this. There's loads of free services out there. Make use out of them. Agni aunt. Aunt Agni. Aunt Agni. you got Auntie Sal here. <laughs> Auntie Alicia here. Come on. You're not alone in this at all. And um, speak to your family. Speak to your friends. Speak to who you feel comfortable speaking with. And just, again, you're not alone in this at all. So, guys, obviously, like, like we said, love yourself. Be kind to yourself. And... Um, we made this podcast to make awareness of mental health within mm. our community and not only for us women but for men as well mm. like um you men take care of yourself right <laughs> <laughs> and um, we hope you enjoyed our podcast and um look out for our next one yeah we'll see we won't you promise you no, no dates but don't rely on us for timings <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say 
but um uh, thank you for watching guys and we hope to see you soon and bye, -bye. bye. Oh, 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 oh,